Right, something a little bit different for you today in preparation for our live Q&A that we're going to be doing on Friday, 8pm, this channel, 8pm UK time that is, so I, I'm, Google's a thing, you can figure out <laughs> what time that is in the rest of the world, but 8pm UK time, this Friday, we me and this lady are going to be doing a live Q&A here on YouTube. But before we get into that, to give you a sample of what a live Q&A with us might be like, we're going to answer one of the most commonly asked questions that we get down in the comments, and that is, why isn't Andy in a mainstream school? <laughs> um, because he can't cope with it. Yeah, there's lots and lots of little reasons, isn't mm. there? There's one really big reason as well. Should we handle the really big reason first? Mm -hmm. the, there, w there was an incident. How long ago was this incident? Oh gosh, he was in year one. Year one, yeah. so what age is that? That's age five, five. six? Yeah. So he'd been at school for less than two years. Yeah, so he'd been nursery, did reception, he was in year one. And it was school time, it was home time, so I... W at this point, this was when you were still in Nottingham, wasn't yeah, it? So yeah, was you were walking him to and from school every day. There was none of this taxi business no, or bus no, no. business. It was at mainstream um, it, was, it was a mainstream primary school that you walked him to every morning mm -hmm. and picked him up from every, every night. night. And then what happened one day when you went to pick him up after uh, a full day at school? So I went to pick him up after a day of college, I think, and I was walking up the driveway. So it was a long driveway and um, amongst all these other parents and there he was walking out. Down the street. Yeah, can I really emphasise here <laughs> to make sure this story hits home the way it's supposed to. He wasn't just walking down the school driveway, he wasn't just walking out of the school gate. He'd got past the driveway, he'd got past the mm -hmm. gate, he was walking down the street towards you. So his, he? yeah, his classroom was about three quarters of the way in to this building and so you have to walk all the way out, come out the front doors, go around and then start walking down to the main road and I probably got five feet into that main gate and there he was just so yeah somehow I mean he had a TA didn't he yeah, yeah he had one-to-one -one TA support mm -hmm. when he was in yeah. mainstream school which is different to what he gets now he's in a special school which is mad um, but back then he was on one-to-one -one TA support so somehow he'd given this TA the slip mm -hmm. made it out of his classroom so he got out of his classroom where there's a teacher so teacher and TA, he's made it out of that classroom without anyone noticing he was gone. He then made it out of the school without anyone noticing that he was gone. Yep. And then made it out of the school grounds. Yep. And the only person who noticed that he'd done it was you. It was me when he was walking towards yeah. me. He was like, hello. So on one, on one side, I guess you're incredibly lucky yeah. that he chose to make his escape two minutes before home time. Yep. Because if he'd have done that at 11 o'clock in the morning, who knows how far he'd have got yeah. and who would have found him. So I guess he probably, we know the way he is with time now. He probably just thought, <laughs> oh, it's home time. I'm going to go home now. Yeah. And the way he is and the way his kind of satellite recognition, photographic mm. memory thing works, he probably would have made his way home anyway. Yeah. But obviously that's not the point. This is a, a six-year-old kid with autism who's got one-to-one -one well, TA support. Well, it would have been five because he was, he's the youngest in his year. A five-year-old kid mm. with autism who has one-to-one -one TA support, who's in a class with a teacher, managed to make it completely out of the school on his own. And presumably there would have been other adults around. You wouldn't have been the only parent picking him up. Well, no, the, the, the way they had the parents is you'd wait outside. As soon as it was, they opened them doors, everybody would pour in. But he'd walked past a load of adults yeah, as well. So, no yeah, so not one person who'd walked past had made any attempt to stop him. They were just, ah, oh, that's fine, we'll just let him wander off yeah. wherever he wants to wander off. So that was that's a that's a big example of why mainstream school isn't really suitable for him. But that wasn't that wasn't the end of mainstream well, no, school. Well, was after it? that they had offset. I told offset about it. And after the holiday, because it was near half term, every door had a had a high reach <laughs> door. <laughs> handle so no kids could get out because they'd fail I guess. Yeah. I mean if he's if he's made it out of school then that's that's a pretty pretty serious safeguarding issue. Mm -hmm. But how long was he still in mainstream for after that incident happened? About two years. So he was still there a while because yeah, so he made it to the year three, year four? Like yes, yeah, something like that. Still in mainstream school and how was that for him? He he made some some progress. His TA was lovely. She she worked with him well because after that the first TA what who let him out well not let him out but gave the so he had a new one and she was lovely and she made loads of progress. She got him out of nappies. She helped with all of that. But then he had to go to 
at a special school because the school couldn't cope anymore. So they made the decision yeah. to move him into special school? Yeah. What couldn't they cope with? What sort of things was he doing that then they couldn't cope I with? I don't him? know. I think the fact that the funding was cut. So he so wasn't going to get one to one TA no, anymore, which um, is a massive thing, obviously. Because bear in mind, even now, he doesn't sit at a desk all day. He's no. not able to do that. So having one to one support for him, certainly in that environment, would have been absolutely crucial. And as soon as that's taken yeah. away, it becomes almost impossible for him to be there. But you said before as well, there was. You've had phone calls from school. <laughs> I'd be, I, it was my day off, and I, be, I did. I got to my gate, and they phoned me up and said, "You need to come and get him. He's broke his tar, his ta's arm." Now, hold on, hold on. Can we just, can we just make sure that you understood what was just said there, or you heard her correctly? It's what two minutes past nine in the morning. She's walked the half mile back to her front door. Yeah. The phone rings. The school are saying, "Please come and get him. He's broken his ta's mm -hmm. arm." How long was she in a cast for? She wasn't. It's not what, the, it, the mini whiteboards they have out outside um, their room, and they'd have like "Good morning." He had knocked the arm off that, and it had banged on her arm. Obviously, it's going to hurt on the funny bone, but she, no, she had not broke okay. it. What a ridiculous thing for a school to say to a parent. And I mean, I don't even know how far into school life was that? Was that just before he was that moved was to special school? Was, yeah, just before he was going. It was the last like summer term, I think. I just don't really, I don't really get how you send him home for that. Was he suspended? No. Not, I, not excluded, not home. suspended. I don't really know on what grounds they send him home then. Because, uh, okay, well, how, yeah, it. how is that absolutely Because they said authorized? she had to go hospital, so they had no Oh, so it was his TA to. who had to go, yeah. right, okay. That's she starting didn't. to make a little she bit more sense. She was just in the bathroom, that's all. She was like, oh, I'm fine, I'm fine. Just uh, aches a bit, and I was like, okay, I'll take him home. So was that in a full-on meltdown, or was it an accident? I'm not sure what happened. She just said we were going to do work on the table, and I think because no one had moved it, you know what he's like? Yeah. He'd knocked it to get it out of the way so he could sit down and it fell on her arm because mm. she was sitting on the wrong side. So it wasn't intentional, we just... It was like and <laughs> then that special school that he moved to then, that's the one that I remember him being mm. at from when I first met you over in Nottingham, which looked like a prison. I mean, there was no way he was escaping from that, but it wasn't the most hospitable of places either. And even at that point, so how old was he when we met? He would have been seven or eight? Yeah. At that point, it was the school was still in walking distance. That school was even closer than yeah, the other yeah, one, yeah, wasn't it? Was it? Just it was the road. just round the corner from where you were living. Mm -hmm. But we were getting the early signs of school refusal then because you were only still in Nottingham for maybe three months after between us meeting and you moving to Peterborough because we're insane. Um, but there were a lot of days during that time because I'd just finished my degree, so I wasn't working. I was getting ready to start my teacher training. So I spent a lot of that summer in Nottingham and most mornings I would walk to school with you. And there were a number of times when I had to carry him to get him there and Stick carry him, in. carry him kicking and screaming and carry him through the school kicking and screaming because mm -hmm. he just absolutely didn't want to be there mm -hmm. and to think that only what a year before was that his first year at that school yeah. so only a year before he was still expected to go to mainstream school mm -hmm. and it's just it's so clear to anybody who's seen him in a in a school environment it's just not something he could ever cope with and it kind of leads into another thing that people have asked um, about why don't we homeschool him and it's it's kind of a similar issue because we're not sending him to school and I know there's a lot of new viewers from the US and this is a little bit different to how it is in America. A couple of people have told me because in America he would be forced to sit exams regardless. Right. Here, he's not going to school to pass exams. No. In all likelihood, he'll never sit an exam. I mean, he might, as he gets more into the habit of going to school, he might find a subject he excels at and he might do an exam at some the point. Thing, isn't he's clever, it's yeah. just how to access that, that cleverness yeah. he's got. You're not going to get him to sit down and write on an exam paper at the moment. I mean, it, it's not to say it won't happen in the future, but no. we're not pinning all our hopes on him <laughs> doing GCSEs and whatever other exams that might come in the future. That's not why we're sending him to school. So mm. homeschooling is pretty pointless because homeschooling is all about getting them through the exams in a different way. And we're not interested in them getting through the exams. And luckily, we say a lot of criticism about his school, but they they understand that. They're not there to try and no, get him through exams. Know. The whole purpose of being there is to teach him independence, teach him social skills, and with a view to preparing him at some point in his life to maybe be able to be semi-independent mm. in some way. They've talked quite a lot to us when we first started 
excited there about how once they've got through school and sixth form and once they're ready to leave at age 19 there's assisted living places nearby and they help them move into a flat with assistance mm -hmm. and they, t they help them find little part-time jobs and there's a lot of focus on taking the kids out into the community and teaching them how to handle money and teaching them how to interact with people in public and again that's another real big reason why he doesn't go to mainstream school because that's not what mainstream school is for mainstream yeah. school is all about getting you through exams and it just wouldn't be of any benefit to him you, there's no point teaching a kid to t trying to teach a kid maths if they don't if they can't apply that maths to the real world if they don't understand what money is if they don't understand how to choose the appropriate clothes for the day so little silly things like <laughs> well is it hot or cold do i need to wear a jumper or shorts do i need to wear my coat we're at that kind of level even though he's 13 we're at that kind of level he's he's intellectually smart when he chooses to access it mm. but doesn't have those basic life skills because he missed out on a huge section of that development time because it was wasted in mainstream school yeah. and we're now playing catch up at this point so that's why Andy doesn't go to mainstream school mm -hmm. now as we said at the start on Friday at 8 p.m. on this channel we're gonna do a live Q&A what I suggest we do, obviously we'll take questions live at the time because that's the nature of Q&A's but to get the ball rolling on the day it'd be handy to have a few questions ready to just start with as soon as we start the broadcast so if you've got any questions you'd really like us to answer um, if you put them in the comments to this video then we'll just get a collection of the best ones together like maybe three or four to just kick things off with on Friday and then we'll be shaped according to the questions that come up in the chat we're not going to stream all night long because no. <laughs> Andy's going to be off in rest by so we're both going to be able to sit there but we're not going to sit there for hours um we're probably looking at maybe eight till nine yeah um, we'll do a little hours slight if we've got enough questions to fill an hour and it'd be really cool to have some of you come along and join us so hopefully we'll see you there i'm going to set up the live event on youtube pretty much as this video goes live so you'll be able to see it and you'll be able to um, set a reminder for yourself so you hit a little notification when it comes up so it's quite a cool little system and it's really cool to see you there if you've enjoyed this video please make sure you give it one of these subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more stuff like this and thank you very much for watching